welcome to the INSO online talk series, Arts Beyond Distance. I'm Ijen uh, from the INSO Arts and Culture Foundation. I'll be a moderator this evening. So this is a platform we create to um, bring distance closer, to uh, have an opportunity to speak to artists and work of their choice uh, about motivation, uh, challenges and process of their creation. So we are very, very lucky tonight. We have Mark Tev with us. Hello, Mark. Hey, hello. Hello. <laughs> so uh, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, yeah, um, my name is Mark Tev and I work um, as a theater director. I make um, performances that are quite research-based and they often take the form of like documentary performances um, that look at history or speculate about the future. Um, I guess my work is quite collaborative uh, or very collaborative rather um, and I tend to work with um, um, a whole bunch of people um, whose names um, are like people like Wong Tae Si and Fami Reza and Shamsul Azaha and um, Faik Shazwan Kuhiri and that's, that's a lot of them. Um, and, and I, I used to teach full-time um, at a university mm -hmm. and um, I, I babysit a lot now. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a 13-month-old and uh, I, I'm also a member of Five Art Center, uh, which okay. is a collective of um, artists and activists and producers and it's been around for, for a very long time. Yes, yeah. okay. So we will, uh, like as usual, so we are on our fifth episode. So yeah, as uh, the same for the past four nights, we will start this whole thing with a quick question challenge. Yeah. So there will be 10 questions for you, uh, but with very short answer, just one word answer will do. So very yeah. instinctive. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Way to relax the guests. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so question number one. Who is your favorite superhero? Um, Swamp Thing. Um, mm -hmm. if, if people know Swamp Thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Question two. Uh, name three items you would bring to a spaceship for outer space travel. Um, baby food diapers, and um, lots and lots of books, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, question three. Uh, what is your favorite movie? My favorite movie? Um, I don't know. I guess my recent uh, favorite one has to be The Rest I Make Up. Um, it's about this Cuban-American writer. I just saw it a few nights ago. There's too many, but yeah, let's just say that one for now. Mm -hmm. Okay, question four. What does success mean to you? Um, it means sucking um, at your own discretion. <laughs> question five. What would you do to battle a T-Rex? Um, I wouldn't. I would let the T-Rex survive and, you know, um, run away. Mm -hmm. Hide in a bush. Okay, question six. If you can plan a trip, uh, which city will you visit? <laughs> right now, it'd be Kuala Lumpur. That'd be nice. <laughs> I would really like to visit Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Okay, question seven. What is your hobby? Um, reading, actually. I really love reading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Question eight. Uh, what time of the day is most inspirational for you? Well, you know, you're, you're talking to like a father of a 13 month old. Uh, <laughs> so actually now is a pretty good time. Um, is because uh, uh, but the baby is asleep and, and my wife and I can get down to some work. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not sure about inspirational, but it's the more, most productive time. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, question nine. Uh, to go up to the mountain or to go to the beach? To go to the beach. Okay, last one. What is the first thing you would like to do after MCO? Um, I would like to take my son um, out to the park and let him run around. Um, he learned to walk over the last three weeks uh, when we are under this MCO. So he has, 
he has walked all over the house already. So um, mm -hmm. it's time to unleash him into the world. Yeah. yeah. Right. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So we're done with all ten questions. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So you mentioned, um, uh, of course, we all know you by a performance maker, researcher, a curator, mm -hmm. a lecturer, or you know. So you wear so many hats. Um, how do you see? Uh, you balance all these different roles. Balance? Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know. I don't. I don't really think of it in terms of balance. Um, mm -hmm. I guess um, the thing that connects all these different activities would be research. Um, you know, like I'm really a researcher or a student by instinct, and um, so then doing performances or um, making exhibitions or, or installation projects with my collaborators. Um, or teaching, um, you know, or more recently curating is like a form of presenting, living with, thinking about, changing your mind about the research, you know, testing out this research. Um, it just so happens that I really like making performances the most, I think. Um, so that tends to be, uh, for now at least, the primary way that this research kind of meets um, people. And yeah, so, mm -hmm. so I... No, no balance. Just mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, how did you actually start to uh, like involving into all this? Mm. Yeah. So, so this is a story I tell all the time. Um, and it started when I was like seventeen years old. I was in Taylor's College, um, uh, and I was an English literature student. I was in the class of um, Mohan Ambikai Parker. Um, who besides being an excellent English literature lecturer was also a social activist um, and a journalist. He was a theater reviewer for The Edge. So he would set us assignments and, you know, force us to go and review theater at, um, at theater in KL. And, and at that time, most of the theatrical activities were directly underneath um, Latara Mereka, the original actor studio uh, underneath Dataran, right? Um, so this is like 98, 1998, you know, the finan Asian financial crisis is happening, uh, Anwar has been sacked, Reformasi is happening, and I remember maybe it was a trick of Mohan's, but um, he would often send us to review performances when there were demonstrations going on, mm -hmm. you know, so like, uh, you know, me and my classmates, uh, you know, we would have to navigate through like tear gas and water cannons and um, protesters, uh, you know, in order to like kind of go and look at shows and fulfill our coursework. And the performances that, that were being done at that time, you know, they were by people like um, Instant Cafe, I remember Namron, very early Namron work, Lo Kopman's work. Um, at that point, he was still with Dandan Theatre, Hussein Sulaiman, um, Amin Muhammad was kind of flirting with theatre, and Five Art Centre were also doing a lot of stuff there as well. Um, so, you know, long story short, um, it became very apparent to me um, mm -hmm. that there was a very thin relationship between um, performance at a political level, mm -hmm. protests, um, political performance, demonstrations, and um, kind of like theatrical um, performances underground, you know, so this layer and the kind of for me permeability, you know, between one and the other um, was something that I, I, I thought a lot about when I was 17, um, I guess, you know, and that, that, that both, both on top and at the bottom were equally invigorating for like the 17 year old version of me. And um, mm -hmm. that's kind of how I got involved in the arts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, politics. Yeah. So, um, did many of them who, at that time, involved mm. with you still in the scene today? <laughs> uh, no, they're not foolish enough to be, you know, like, uh, yeah, they, they didn't uh, misspend their youth. Um, uh, of course, there are, there are loads of um, people who became artists, um, and, and by that I mean specifically the ones who I can imagine uh, were, were at Taylor's with me. So people like, Kubir Jafwani um, is a filmmaker, directs a lot of commercials. Um, someone like Manish Nesaratnam, um, who's now based in Melbourne, I believe, um, but also a filmmaker. 
Um, and of course, uh, someone like Fami Fadzil, um, who uh, is a politician, you know, the MP for Limbah Pantai, um, but also a member of Five Arts and um, is a performer and, and has been in many of the projects that I have done. So at least those three guys and, and maybe some others uh, mm -hmm. are about, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not bad. There's still at least three. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, yeah. Others, the others are way, 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 way happier. <laughs> uh. <laughs> right. So um, you have chosen these complete futures of Malaysia. Ah, to yeah. Discuss today, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about this work. Um. Yeah. In so general. I. I watched Cho Guan's, um, Cho Guan's um, talk the other night, I think, um, and he was also talking about 2020. So the project is is also in relation to that. And it's interesting. I think Cho Guan and I are born in the same year, um, mm -hmm. 81. Um, and, and so this was a project uh, that I did, The Complete Futures of Malaysia, with uh, my collaborators um, trying to research, excavate, um, bring up evidences of and rethink um, about principally wawasan dua puluh dua puluh, but uh, more generally how were Malaysian futures presented. So we called it the Complete Futures Malaysia of Malaysia. It's a very grandiose title, obviously, um, but basically it was an attempt to kind of um, discuss, debate, think about Malaysia's futures because you know. Futures are always kind of um, talked about or planned or proposed by politicians and bureaucrats and technocrats and people who could know, know better. Mm -hmm, but as mm -hmm. we can see in the moment that we're in right now in the world, um, that is yeah. absolutely untrue. Um, mm -hmm. So the project had several different chapters. Mm -hmm. um, and shall I, do you want me to talk about the different yeah, chapters yeah, or how, how should we do this? Yeah, yeah, maybe a little bit of introduction. Of okay, the, cool, cool, cool. So yeah. um, this was a project that we did from 20, maybe 16 to 2018. Mm -hmm. um, so when I started this process, it was with um, the visual artist Wang Tae Si and um, Faik Shazwan Kuhiri and Ali Alasri, who are like um, performers and um, Faik's a YouTube dude. Um, and what we did was we 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 um, we invited to take part in an exhibition um, called Escape from the Sea, curated by Yap Salbin and Hiroyuki Hattori from Japan. Mm -hmm. And we put up a kind of time capsule or archive, open archive, for two months during the exhibition, where we invited members of the public to donate objects, images, um, paraphernalia anything lah, that had to do with Malaysia's future. So we had three cabinets, let's say, um, that uh, that were kind of tagged towards 2020, 2050, and 2100. So, you know, near future, mid future, far future. So we will collect all these things from members of the public and we will kind of categorize them um, into into these um, different uh, cabinets, depending on where on the timeline they um, uh, landed. And of course, most of the things that we got were related to Wawasan 2020. Mm -hmm. So this was in 2017 when we did this. And what was doubly interesting was when we were doing this research, then Prime Minister uh, Najib Raza announced the launch of TN 2050. Transformasi Nasional Dua Pulo Lima Pulo, you know, and of course it was this bullshit kind of like rebranding essentially of um, Wawasan 2020. Um, I think spearheaded by him and Kairi Jamaluddin, um, and you know they use all these buzzwords like they were unlike Wawasan Dua Pulo Dua Pulo, which was a top-down kind of a thing by Mahade. They were trying to um, crowdsource from the youth. Right, so the Ministry of Youth and Sports became the the agent through which this was dispersed, and they apparently got feedback, you know, through social media, blah 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 blah, um, from two million young people, um, mm -hmm. their aspirations, their fantasies, their dreams of uh, futuristic, you know, um, unsustainable Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So this was in the background when we were doing yeah. this collection. So it was very interesting um, to 
to collect materials related to our Sandro Pro Duplo while Najib's project was ongoing. So people could compare quite easily 2020 and 2050 continuities, discontinuities. Was it the same just with like more buzzwords like Industrial Revolution 4.0 and those kind of things. So that's what we did. I'm not sure if um, people can see images, um, but that's that's the kind of um, thing that was open for, for tomorrow. So we collect all sorts of stuff, Ijan. Like um, there was lots of science fiction novels, um, Malay science fiction novels, particularly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There were films, you know, that we'd forgotten about, like Shuko 21, which mm -hmm. the Nashet group Raihan was in. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like a future Islamic Malaysia. Um, we had um, a lot of Lat comics. Lat is the kind of prophet of um, the future in a way, you know. Yeah. Um, and we also had a lot of um, um, magazines, you know, um, policy papers and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So all these materials all that you collected, it's, uh, and then there was exhibition and stuff. But then right now, after the whole exhibition and all this presentation mm -hmm. of the work, yeah. is it available anywhere online or? Like um, not, not really. I mean, we didn't kind of like go that next mm -hmm. step of creating a website and putting stuff up. Um, the images that you're seeing is actually of the next chapter. They are of a performance that we did call version 2020, mm -hmm. which um, I can also talk about. But um, I think the images of um, the other, it's, it's the other one. It's like the, the cabinets and a lot of the yeah. stuff that we got. Um, yeah. no, so going back to your question, we didn't put that stuff up on mm -hmm line although um, lots of people especially this year seem to be very interested in the material and asking us um, you know if they can talk to us and all that sort of stuff but actually a lot of that stuff was online you know a lot of people submitted stuff online actually mm -hmm. oh, okay. um, yeah so so you know the things would be like children's drawings you know I think um, all of us kind of th those born in the 80s grew up yeah. having being forced to like write karangan, yeah. you know, yeah. or like drawings of what Malaysia would look yeah. like in the year yeah. 2020, oh, those kind of things, right? Glass bubble ball and then flying around in the sky. And yeah, 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 yeah. Now yeah. you really have to go out in a bubble ball. Huh? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so that was the chapter one of the Complete Futures. Correct. So like, um, you know, so, so we collected stuff. So the archive kept on changing and shifting and um, morphing a little bit, I guess you can say, over the course of the two months. Um, but alongside the, the, the two month long exhibition, we organized three events, which were really cool. Um, you know, um, three parallel events during the exhibition. Um, so one event was called Framing the Futures, where um, we invited an astrophysicist um, from Academy Science Malaysia, Dr. Maslan Ofman, um, Ibrahim Sufyan from the Merdeka Center for Opinion Research, and Julian Ng from BFM, who does a lot of the kind of like morning economics, finance stuff, to talk about the future from their perspective. You know, notions of finance or the economy, notions of political, uh, polling and notions of the future according to astrophysics. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a really cool event. The second event that we did was we had the writer Ridwan Saidi um, share um, like tropes uh, or interesting trends that uh, were particularly prevalent that he thought was interesting in um, Malay science fiction. Mm -hmm. um, and the third event, which was the craziest event that we did, was um, called 2063 Future Ministries, where it was like a five hour event, I think. And we invited 24 different people mm -hmm. um, to become ministers. Um, mm -hmm. So Malaysia at that point had 24 ministries. Mm -hmm. And we gave them each like 10 minutes, I think to propose what they would change if they ran that ministry mm -hmm. in the year 2063 when Malaysia would become 100 years old. So the people range from like human rights activists to lawyers to um, journalists to science fiction writers. 
um, to scientists, to Singa well, one Singaporean environmentalist, um, to a Rohingya uh, refugee activist. Um, so a really, really like diverse range mm -hmm. of people, you know, and of mm -hmm. course the proposals range from um, really interesting and practical and, you know, dealing with removing certain laws and legislations to like weird, wacky, impossible, wanky, funny stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. how, how did the audience respond to this kind of work? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, In particular of this uh, ministry's thing, the five hours event, did you, did you have any feedback? Like what yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I just remember there was a lot of like laughter and groans, you know, because there was a lot of like crazy proposals, mm -hmm. um, like really creative proposals, you know, um, um, impossible proposals, um, everything from like removing the IC to like, um, uh, you know, making um, someone from an Orang Asli, Orang Asal community uh, to become prime minister. Um, I mean, loads of people, from what I gathered, um, thought it was really interesting to use the format of a cabinet, you know, to think about um, what would you do if you were in that cabinet? Uh, what would you do if some of the people um, you would not usually see were, were put in cabinet positions. And, you know, um, Desi, Ali, Faik, and I were very careful to make sure we had, um, I think at the time, uh, people from all 14 states and mm -hmm. beyond across, across uh, in the cabinet. You know, we had, um, um, yeah, uh, gender uh, equivalence, uh, whatever you call it. Um, so, so it was interesting to see a really, like, weird Frankenstein cabinet. Um, and completely cannot make sense one actually because if they all existed in the same cabinet, they would literally kill each other. Yeah. Um, but that sounds like many Malaysian cabinets. Yeah. Yeah. But does that? I mean, is that what the original aim that you when you plan to do this when you created? Uh, you mean the cabinet thing? The, the uh, yeah yeah. So so is that the aim of what you want the audience to take away? What what's your aim when you created it? I think it was to kind of suggest uh, different imaginations, you know, to suggest a format. It's kind of like a conference lah, in a way. Yep. Um, but rather than to have like the uh, a, a kind of strictly conference format, it was to use the ruse of a cabinet meeting, mm -hmm. you know, like a five hour long cabinet meeting where all these 24 individuals would have, I don't know, 10 minutes um, to present their ideas. Um, so that was the kind of frame, I guess you can say, that we were aiming for. Um, and of course, audiences uh, were allowed to leave and come in. Um, and, and of course, one of the, this, so this is something that I do quite a lot to create these open structures that are quite performative. Um, and people come, of course, to see certain people that they might be interested in. Oh, you know, Siti Kasim is going to be like the minister, the minister of um, environment, I think, at that time. Mm -hmm. um, or I want to see Azmi Sharom as the finance minister, um, and so on and so forth. And of course, part of the strategy is that um, these um, personalities bring their own audiences, friends, so people who are not necessarily from the same fields or circles um, meet, I guess, mm -hmm. and they bring their different friends, audiences, gang uh, into the same space um, and hear, hear stuff that partly confirms their worldviews but certainly they would also I think hear some stuff that might really challenge um, yeah, their worldviews. Yeah, so what, um, I mean, what do you enjoy the most in the process of creating such a piece? Um, the research the talking and the arguing with the collaborators. Mm -hmm. um, um, we spend a lot of time researching and for us, uh, research is never complete. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that makes us stop or pause is because there are certain pressures of showing, right? Um, you know, you need to meet an audience because the exhibition opens. Um, because things have to start, things have to close, because um, a performance has certain dates and venues need to be booked. Um, but essentially, you know, my, my gang and I, we take a long time to research um, and, and we enjoy um, 
taking that time um, and thinking about that, how that research could manifest itself in different ways, um, you know, because the same content in an exhibitionary format um, uh, can, can draw out nuances of meaning uh, very differently from a performative format, you know, from a video format. Um, and, you know, all art forms have their limitations, right, and their strengths. So it's also to kind of understand for us, um, like where some of these limitations are um, and how we can, we can, so that's, that's a lot of the pleasure, I guess you can say, from our working. Yeah. So it seems like this is not like the conventional theatre making way where usually we have a script first and then you just, with the script you direct a play, that kind of conventional way. So this is obviously not how it's approached. So it's, uh, could, mm -hmm. could we say it's more like a collective brainstorming process? In yeah, that's a really nice way of putting it. I mean, um, one, of the, one of the things that um, we talk a lot about in our group is collective intelligence. Okay. You know, um, and we rely a lot on collective intelligence. And of course, if you work together for a long time, um, and this group of people grow, you know, like um, it's not uh, only the same people, like over the years we've included some, some new people. But if you work together for a long time, like being in a music band, mm -hmm. um, a kind of vocabulary, a kind of sensitivity to each other, um, uh, the temperature in the room, um, um, and a kind of collective intelligence emerges, you know, um, and, and I think talking about music is a really nice way to think about the way that we work. And in, in some cases, I think a lot of our projects, we, we work on them like albums, you know, so we go away for a few years or a few months and then we come back and there's a new, new project that we kind of uh, want to do together. Um, so that's, that's, a way of working and it's not it's not always the easiest um, yeah. because there's a lot of um, disagreement um, and, and if there's a lot of disagreement it means you must have a very strong stance you know strong stance in relation to the content to the material a kind of political stance but at the same time also a kind of poetical stance if I can yeah. say that yeah. because um, yeah like you said we're not trying to make like um, drama Mm -hmm. You know, so so sometimes if um, we've worked with people and they kind of get a bit confused <laughs> um, um, because they're like, oh my gosh, like have to spend a lot of time like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like, like arguing, like that's, yeah. that's your way of working, like what the hell, you know, <laughs> uh, and, and it's not for everyone um, and it can be very frustrating. So yeah, yeah it's, 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 but it's a particular way of working that I'm yeah. comfortable with, yeah. So are you currently still practicing this way of creating work? Um, no, now I, I'm a complete authoritarian. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. it is still how yeah. uh, we work. Um, mm -hmm. um, I mean, eventually um, there are certain roles, of course, you know, like yeah. I tend to be the director, yeah. uh, certain people tend to be the performers, but the performers in the performances that we make together, like version 2020, um, yeah. Um, the, the images that you saw just now, yeah. you know, um, a lot of the time the performers are actually performing versions of themselves. Um, so I rarely work with trained performers, mm -hmm. but really I work with people who are activists or journalists mm -hmm. um, and find ways uh, together for these people to be on stage, share their narratives, share their research, share their experiences. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for those of you who just joined us on the live video, there were actually photos of, uh, that we show in the very beginning. Those are photos of the version 2020, which is um, chapter three of the Conflict Futures of Malaysia. Well, right. we will yeah. share more information after this, talk, this session at nine o'clock on the Facebook page. So if you follow and then you get more information from there and then you can follow Mark and Five Arts and all this uh, different channel that you can get more information if you're interested. Yeah. So um, you recently had this newborn baby. So how, this, how does this actually change your lifestyle and, and, and your creative practice and research process? Yeah, it's such a great question. Ijan. <laughs> Um, I guess, 
first things first, um, like, you know, social distancing, I think is super, it's a super difficult time for everyone. But, um, and I'm not making light of that situation, but strangely enough, like having, having a child over the last one year, um, kind of rehearsed um, my partner and I for like social distancing, you know, like staying indoors, um, not going out. Um, so, so that has been a really interesting shift um, because we are not getting uh, a lot of extra help. Um, like our mothers um, sometimes help on days that either um, my wife or I like need to have meetings or rehearsals, um, but both of us work and we try and manage it such that um, Sharon works from like 10 to 3. And if I have meetings or rehearsals, I try and have them from 4 p.m. onwards. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned earlier, now is bedtime. So like from eight o'clock onwards is, um, is a, things are calmer. <laughs> <laughs> Does that actually influence the way you think? And of, of course I think. So how did that influence the way you create or the way you? Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's too early to tell, I guess. Um, but let's just say I'm a lot more intim, uh, like I'm a lot more kind of, uh, careful about time, you know, um, um, because time is precious in terms of like having to work, um, but also precious in terms of like having to be at home and you know letting Sharon do her thing and making sure that um, the baby is okay yeah. and and, and uh, so time time my, my sense of time is kind of like much more uh, strict I guess mm -hmm. and you know uh, I hadn't always been that way um, yeah and having a baby can be a good excuse to uh, <laughs> to not do a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 I want to see your show, but, yeah. you know, I gotta, like, look after this okay. baby. Okay, oh. now we know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. it, it does have its advantages, yes. So between the role of a father and an artist, which one you think is more challenging to manage? Um, they're, not, they're not challenging. They're both not challenging. Um, um, they're both quite interesting adventures, um, and they present lots of uh interesting pleasures but also problems i guess is where the question is coming from mm -hmm. but um as as a researcher as an artist and <laughs> am i gonna say it as a father um i like problems um because because i like figuring out how to turn or around the problem to make the problem productive so 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 it's yeah i, I don't think it's um it's yeah yeah are you currently working on a new work or um we were uh so um we were doing a show called a notional history um which was shown last year in um tpam yokohama and salihara in jakarta yep. um and we were due to perform last week of March, like a few weeks ago, uh, two weeks ago in, in Japan, Saitama. Um, of course, because of the COVID-19 situation, that's been postponed and um, another festival that we are due to perform in is cancelled and we were looking to do it in KL also. So, but um, briefly, that project was really looking um, at, in a way, it's connected to 2020. Um, I'm not sure if too many people know this, but, you know, this year, in 2020, there is a new Malaysian history textbook from four textbooks that came out. Mm -hmm. And this textbook focuses specifically on the 20th century Malaysian history. So, you know, everything from Japanese occupation uh, to 1969 to Mahathir and blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. Um, so this book is quite interesting because it was until like six weeks ago, the first one released under Pakatan Harapan. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of anxiety and interest to see what was removed and what was included in this history textbook. But of course, you know, six weeks ago, uh, things yeah. turned upside down. So, 
but but that still hasn't changed um, the questions around this textbook. Yeah. So this project that we had that we did a notional history um, is a play on the word national history la. So notional like speculative history, right? And we were trying to work with the idea of what does a unwritten history textbook or a new history textbook mm -hmm. for a different context, a different Malaysia would look like. Yeah. And could this material sit uh, next to footages from a film that we did like 12 years ago um, where we interviewed um, uh, members of the Communist Party of Malaya. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was, a, it was an attempt to bring these two sets of documents or, or, or ideas together, a history textbook and a documentary that was never completed. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so that's the gandala. Yeah, yeah. The world <laughs> is the gandala anyway. Yes, of course. Oh. <laughs> so no complaints. There were quite a lot of questions coming in. So oh, okay. I'm pick up some of them. Okay, first one. I saw Mark performing in Sectim's Descendants of the Unit at Myra in 2000. Wow, that will, must be a really old will, person. Will we see him act on stage again? No, 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 no. I'm really a, not a happy performer at all. Um, yeah, it's like, it's okay. It was a flirtation, you know. Um, you know as, plans or? I mean, I, 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 I do kind of like lecture performances from time mm -hmm. to time, but um, certainly um, you would not find me leaping around doing physical theater um, like I did all that time ago in um, Sekton's production. Um, yeah, I, that, it's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. What are some of the influences of Mark's work? The incorporation of non-professional in some of his projects reminds me of Rimini Protocols, use of experts of every day. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I guess that's become a reference like recently um, mm -hmm. because I mean, you know, in the last five six years, um, because we are getting a little bit more exposure um, around and and you know, like um, coming across these kind of practices. But actually, it's really interesting. Like when we started doing theater when we were like 18 years old, you know, people like Fami, Kuber, myself and others, like we were literature students and sociology students. Yeah. We never did performing arts. We're not like ASK, Aswara, New Era, Sunway, you know, type people. Um, and many of those places didn't exist, right, um, at that time. Um, so in my path towards making performance was always um, not, true non-trained means, which of course has its advantages and disadvantages. Um, I have, of course, worked with highly trained human beings like Marion de Cruz in this um, documentary portrait I made with her called Gostan Forward um, some years back. And um, uh, the dancer choreographer Lee Rensin was in version 2020 and Anne James has been in several of my projects. Um, but I go back to what I said earlier, like a lot of the people that I work with, um, um, what's really important is their own perspective and their own stance towards the subject that we are uh, excavating or researching together. So if it's the emergency, if it's um, thinking about how the figure of Jinping has been um, turned into a uh, figure that haunts Malaysia endlessly, even after he dies, or if it's about excavating the debris of 2020, you know, um, like the the performers that, or the people on stage that I'm trying to look for, um, are people that kind of need to bring their own way of seeing, their own way of working. Um, otherwise, it gets very frustrating for 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 everyone involved, you know, um, because I'm not a good um, acting director. Um, uh, that's not really the impetus behind a lot of the, the work that we create together. Um, so it'd be very frustrating for for for. for yeah. So some of these references, of course, um, yeah, like you know, people like Rimini Protocol, um, people like I guess Lola Arias from Argentina, um, but there's so many, you know, who kind of uh, work in this way. 
Um, and what I also like about this way of working is that it makes us question what is performance, obviously, who can be on stage, um, what is the apparatus of the theater, you know, who does it serve, um, why are we watching this, who is speaking, what's being represented, um, and I think these are very important questions uh, that are political questions as well as poetic questions. So these are the questions that we like busy ourselves with. Yeah. yeah. Right. So there's another one coming. So I always believe that core idea is the most important part in making performance. How do you see ideas and controlling them since people have their own thoughts for the final product? Um, how to... Could you just repeat that? I just yeah, was, I don't, yeah. So I always believe Good. that core idea yeah. is the most important part in making performance. Yeah. So how do you see ideas and controlling them since people have their own thoughts for the final product? Uh, okay, so maybe it's not about controlling. It's not about control, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, because of the way that we have worked, um, a lot of our performances tend to be quite collagistic. I mean, collagistic in terms of narratives. In a show like Version 2020, the performers um, time travel, let's say, you know, between their youth uh, in the 90s. So like Fami Reza goes back to the 90s. Uh, Imri Nasution goes back to the 90s. People like Faik Shazwan Kuhiri talks about visiting the... Najib's future. Uh, he went to Najib's Expo Nagaraku on Datar Mudeka and he kind of like, you know, experienced this spectacle of the future of 2050 that Najib created. Um, so we bring all these little stories together um, and we friction them with like official documents, say for example, like Mahade's speech that where he announced uh, Wawasan Dopo Doplo in 1990. 91, right? Talking about how we must become a first world, develop fully self-sufficient country by um, 2020, you know, like this neoliberal vision, but with like Asian values, you know, uh, uh, basically that was the premise. Um, so, so all I'm trying to say is that we, we collage all these things together, you know, and in the end, what stays in the show is discuss um, quite uh, collaboratively and collectively. Um, and all the performers, I feel, um, I could be wrong, uh, they have a very strong stake in the stories that are being told, um, and it always needs to end up being a composite picture. Um, so that's how we make performances, and that's why also in our performances, the kind of stance that I think um, we tend to take is that, I think in a lot of like, especially theater, um, you know, uh, performers tend to want to impress the audience mm. or to dominate them or to somehow seek their approval. Mm. And our approach is to try and meet audiences as equals, yep. you know, like, 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 and often in a lot of our performances, we, we try not to put the audience at like, a, to look down on the performers but we try, if possible, to have them on the same level. Like we're all touching the same floor. That's just a very specific thing that we, we try and aim for. And the idea is that, um, you know, the, of course the performers are like a small group of people that are kind of mirroring the audience, right? And the, the stories that we tell about version 2020, uh, sorry, about 2020, could be stories that any member of the audience could have. Yep. you know, um, being products of um, Mara scholarships or telecom scholarships mm -hmm. like Fami Reza. Um, Imri tells a story in our performance of participating on the National Day Parade, you know, being one of those people who had to make the Wawasan 2020 logo on the field of Dataran Medeka, you know, like a human pixel um, in, in this field. And loads of people went through those experiences. So we always feel like we try and meet the audience as equals and um, and that's something that I, I see a lot in say um, Lee Renson's work as well you know she doesn't try to over the audience or like seek the approval of the audience in her own work I mean she kind of like tries to yeah. 
be equal with the audience. Yeah, I think because conventionally a lot of art forms actually it's quite hierarchical and this non-hierarchical approach it's is actually quite yeah challenging at times. Yeah, it's not it's it's I mean it's difficult, you know. Um but it's like politics, you know, like um prefigurative politics, right? So it's about trying to enact what you want in the future. Yeah. Um, but now, you know, um, that's what the Occupy movement was about, for example, you know. Um, but that's also what we try and do in rehearsals. We try and like do the kind of theater and work in the kind of way that we would like, which is, as you said, not so hierarchical or, yeah. um, in the rehearsal room. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. always work. We fail, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. We fail even, as well. yeah. I mean, even from the uh, collective brainstorming way of creating, it's it's a very non-hierarchical approach. But it sometimes it could be a lot more time-consuming than the conventional way of doing. Yeah, that's why we. But we take but a the long outcome time. would be yeah very different usually. Yeah. 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 yeah, there were quite a lot more. Okay, we have to move faster. Okay. Let's... So what role do you see yourself in these collective brainstorming sessions following the music analogy? It similar is it similar to a conductor? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting, I guess. Mm. I, I don't know I don't know the reference, uh what music reference to use, but um the kind of bands, if people are into music, that we are thinking about would be like really big, um, primarily rock collectives like Broken Social Scene, mm -hmm. you know, um, Arcade Fire, like 10 people, 15 people on stage together. They are often interchanging positions, interchanging uh, instruments. Um, people are kind of a bit multi multi-directional and they are yeah you know like 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 um so conductor is very uh very you know you control a lot with a small stick <laughs> yeah <laughs> right so uh okay this is quite interesting so what is making you happy and what is making you angry what is making me angry is really easy right like um <laughs> This government, you know, this government, but also the previous government before that, that they let it get to that stage, mm. right, of mm. um, implosion, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, I don't want to turn this into a rant because it's not yeah. productive, but yeah. uh, obviously I'm very concerned and very uh, looking carefully at a lot of the measures that are being taken uh, yeah. around the... MCO right now because yeah. um, it really reminds me of a lot of the conditions that were set up during the Malayan emergency. Yeah. You know, identification, surveillance, yeah. um, control of population, um, you know, the treatment of marginalized communities, um, especially um, uh, our uh, foreign uh, labor force. Yeah. Um, so I'm 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 paying you know attention to a lot of this. Um, it's good that there's lots of initiatives going on like Kita Jaga Kita and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's frustrating, right? Because usually a lot of us would be out on the ground. Um, but you know, we're we're stuck behind screens and yeah. stuck in 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 rectangles and squares and and feeling frustrated. Yeah. So that's angry. Yeah. Happy is, it's really simple right now. It's like my kid, you oh, know, yeah. like, yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he like does, yeah, I mean, you know, for, for my partner and I, it's like every week is like a new yeah. achievement unlock, you know, like this week he can hold things properly in his hands. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow. And then he can walk. It's like another wow. And uh, he can climb stairs. It's like, wow. Oh shit. You know, uh, <laughs> lots of lots of different things are related to yeah. the incredible growth um, of this child. Yeah, right. Okay, how did the experience working abroad, especially outside of Southeast Asia, impacted on your work? Um, it's a good question. Uh, I think I think the best way to answer that. Um, is 
to have the opportunities to present your work in different contexts is always useful and valuable. And we've learned that in the last few years, you know, um, up till very recently, up till four or five years ago, we always only cared about a local audience. And we happened to be invited to a festival in 2015 in Gwangju, and right. we started getting invited to more. Um, what has been useful is seeing the work that we do um, brief differently, if that makes any sense, you know, like um, because an audience and, you know, I don't, I, I'm not sure about the non-Southeast Asian part of the, the question because I, I love performing in Southeast Asia. Um, having, having different audiences that have a, have a different context or can look at the work in different ways, you know, without some of the political baggage or poetic baggage or artistic baggage that comes from being Malaysian because, you know, you're an insider and you know, like, these narratives uh, quite closely or these, these, these images quite closely. Um, it's a kind of oxygen, you know, for us. Um, um, because one of, the, one of the things I guess about Malaysians is that we, we love being Malaysians. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like like we, we love to celebrate ourselves, yeah. um, and and I mean it struck me. For example, I was I always use this example like you know Malaysia Kini is the biggest news website in the country. I'm a subscriber. I love Malaysia Kini um, and the work that they've done for the last two decades. But it's surprising to me that to this day Malaysia Kini still only really covers local news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crazy, you know, like, like this, we're, we're, we're part of the world, you know, we're part of Southeast Asia, we're connected to so many things, but like the biggest news website in the country only really talks about Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean, you know, like um, Malaysians love talking about Malaysian things and being Malaysians, and I'm one of those people for sure. Um, but it's really good to be able to share and compare um, contacts. You know, we can learn a lot from our neighbors, particularly um, other Southeast Asian countries that share very similar problems with democracy, you know, um, very similar problems with feudalism uh, and, and, and trying to figure ways out the future and so on and so forth. Um, and the, the artists that we have the most to learn from, for me, often are artists from Southeast Asia because they face exactly the same kind of challenges. Yeah. Right. Uh, one more. So some of your works have been presented in the context of visual arts rather than performing arts. So you sit in the middle of this Venn diagram. Can you comment on the crossing or hybrid of visual art and performing arts melting together? How do you position yourself to get your work out? Um, I don't know, actually. I'm not, that's a good question, you know, but I haven't, I haven't thought about it super self consciously mm -hmm. um, um, yeah I mean I haven't re really thought about positioning myself um, in that way um, it comes back down to several things for me you know like curiosity research finding people and contacts to work with mm -hmm. um, and in between of course you are dealing with a lot of institutions you are dealing with a lot of uh, stakeholders um, and the stakeholders and the vocabularies are different, of course, in different fields. Um, but I, I sometimes don't think of it in terms of being interdisciplinary. I, I oftentimes think of it as being a busy body. <laughs> you know, uh, like, like busy body is interdisciplinary, lah, you know? Um, and, and, and so maybe the way I position myself is as a busy body. Um, and I try and follow these curiosities that I have. Um, towards people and subject matter and context that that might be useful for my own work or my own research and and sometimes I get invited because some people find that um, my way of working or whatever you know like uh, is useful for 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 that context or that 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 um, situation yeah. um, um, so it's an ongoing question it's a really good question um, and it's something that I'll think more about as I get some opportunities to curate now um, but I also see this kind of you know like it's a cliche right like um, you know museums are showing a lot more performative events and um, 
there are festivals that show a lot of visual arts um, or filmic uh, kind of components and, and, and things like that. Um, and I think these boundaries um, were quite artificial in the first place, especially within the Southeast Asian context. Yeah. Um, and and I'm, not, I'm not too concerned with the question of position. I just want to be in that diagram. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, yeah. 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 Sure. Whatever the diagram is. Yeah. So do you have any advice for those who want to go into, <laughs> uh, like, be a practitioner in the field? Yeah. Um, the first advice that I remember um, someone gave me, it's really good advice, is don't trust anyone over 30 years old. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I'm over 30, so, so you know, um, so don't trust advice, right? Uh, if you're trying to get in, th there's so many routes, you know. Um, you, can, you can, if you have the capacity and the finance too, you can join some courses, you know. Um, you, if you're just interested in flipping for a while, there's, there's that path, there's going for auditions, blah, 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 blah. If you're like a little bit more serious and committed, then you can go and join some performing arts programs. Um, but you know that's not the path that I took. I just kind of like ended up um, doing stuff with um, some people that that were also similar, you know. Um, so I'm not. I think there are many ways really um, um, to have a life in the performing arts. Um, but maybe it's not so much to do with performing arts, maybe it's just general stuff, you know, and I'm not sure if this is advice, it's just more like notes for myself, you know, like uh, things that I find important is like pay attention to what no one else is paying attention to, mm -hmm. you know, that stuff uh, is usually in the corners of the room, in the margins of the room, or sometimes it's not in the room, that, that's the stuff that needs paying attention to, I guess. Um, and I, I probably already mentioned this just now, but you know, like enjoy enjoy problems because yeah. life and especially the performing arts arena in Malaysia is filled with them you yeah. know so so if if you want to work in this area you've got to like want to work with problems and like you know uh, uh, make the problems productive yeah. yeah that's it that's a really great conclusion <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thank you so very much. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Ijan, for doing this yeah. series. Um, it's, been, it's been really cool. Thank you for those who joined us tonight. I hope you had a great time. Uh, so please remember to log back into the Facebook page and follow all this information that we're going to share about all our speakers for the past five days. And uh, continue to stay home and stay safe and stay healthy. Right? Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.